In this video, we're going to wrap up the creation of this material. So let's get started by finishing up the base color. So we left off in the previous video, we had this uh, noise pattern here. This is our color value. We had this created. And what we want to do now is move into this moss and dirt color section. And so we're going to cover uh, several sections with this. We're going to look at moss and dirt, or we're going to look at the curvature, the dirt, and then we're going to check out how this water and moss is going to be, uh, this water and rock moss, I'll say, is going to be added to our base color. So let's get started here with the dirt and moss color itself. So to begin, I start with just a grunge map. So these are just the grunge, this is grunge map 001, and I have another map here, which is moisture noise. And so these are just grunge maps that you can find here in the library. And so uh, the first thing we want to do is take this grunge map and we want to uh, basically combine it with uh, our uh, map that we had been working with previously. So if I want to kind of see, you know, where some of these connections are going, if you ever have like a graph, um, you know, such as this, if you're in Substance Designer 5.1, uh, we now have a new option where you can click this link button here. And instead of it being curves, uh, we now kind of have these elbow pattern or these straight line links. Uh, and it's a bit easier to follow. Uh, another way that I kind of do this is uh, I'll just simply look at the link. I'll make sure that I select the link. It gets this kind of uh, more uh, thick highlight to it, and it makes it a little bit easier to follow here. So I'm just kind of tracing this back here uh, to this noise pattern. So in the previous video, we talked about creating this noise pattern that we then that we then colorized uh, with our gradient. So here is our uh, here is our link. Uh, we're just going to follow this link back, and you can see that we're going to be taking this grunge map and we are going to uh, multiply it here uh, over top of that previous noise to get uh, this pattern here. Now, just as I've been saying throughout the entire series, is it's all about variation. So here is where we're just going to uh, just further variate this. So I try not to use just one noise. I try to always use two. Uh, so here's another noise here, this moisture noise. And so here's the blend to this. Now, uh, like I had stated previously, uh, we've got two maps, uh, moisture noise, and now we have this blend. And so I want to combine these two together. Whenever you have two of these grayscale value maps here, uh, we can blend them together uh, by using the max lighten mode. And then here you can see that I've used the opacity just to kind of back off uh, this blending uh, this blending mode here. So just to get a little bit of a uh, kind of a blend uh, between the two uh, beyond just this max lighten. So long story short here, the max lighten is really good for uh, blending in uh, two of these grayscale value maps. So uh, now that we have uh, the gray value map, and this uh, typically becomes the process when we're creating a noise that we want to colorize, we build up the noise first, and then we colorize it with a gradient map. So here I have the gradient map, and uh, this here is going to be my moss color. So taking this value as input, uh, just going in and just setting a few keys here, some brown, little uh, kind of a yellowish tint to the brown, some green, a uh, little bit of red tint here towards the end uh, of, the, uh, of the keys here, just to get uh, the colorization of these values here. And this is going to represent the moss. So then um, I took the same, uh, the same map, or excuse me, the same grunge map here, and we're just going to colorize it again, uh, this time just uh, using another gradient map but just a few different key values here. So notice here we've got uh, an effect here. This is going to uh, be the dirt, and uh, this is a bit more of a contrasty map. So we've got some you know, brighter areas here and some darker areas. So at this stage, we've got kind of some color values for our moss, and now we have some here for our dirt. Now finally here, just process this here with the levels uh, just to kind of uh, you know, darken this up even more here. Uh, so now, again, we have our moss, and here we have our dirt. And we're going to start to utilize uh, these two maps here in a couple different ways. So we're going to utilize it uh, mainly with the water, uh, also with our moss, and then some edge work here uh, that uh, will kind of bring us more into talking about uh, mass generation here for our water. So um, before we move forward uh, here on working with the water and such, um, I want to talk about uh, the curvature section here. So I have this section here for curvature. And if we look at the rock, uh, some of the things that I'm doing with this curvature, curvature section is I've got uh, some white, uh, some white wear, uh, white edge wear around the rocks themselves and in some of the detail area. And so to create this, all I'm doing is just an edge wear effect on the rock itself. So um, before we talk about this section, let's just you know pass down here to this dirt section, uh, which is uh, which is going to flow into this curvature, curvature section. 
So uh, back when we talked about the roughness, I had talked about this dirt. So we're going to start here, and uh, what this is is just dirt, and I'm just using one of our stock mass generators, and that's going to be uh, the dirt generator. So if we go to mesh adaptive, you can see under mass generators we have dirt. This is a this is a great generator. I use this in every single project because it's just a it's a really good way to put uh, just some dirt areas in the occluded and uh, you know have it kind of be driven by curvature and ambient occlusion. And you're always going to want to have you know some type of variation in these kind of occluded areas like this. So you know this dirt um, generator gets used quite often uh, in my workflows. So the first thing I need though in order to utilize this dirt, uh, here I've, you can see that I'm in uh, material compact material mode as denoted here by the top of the uh, viewport in the link creation mode. So if I want to switch this here, um, I'm just going to actually use the keyboard shortcut. So I'm going to hit 2 on the keyboard. It's going to kind of expose the inputs I need. So I need a curvature and an ambient occlusion. Well, we can create that simply enough here in uh, Substance Designer. So the first thing I'm going to do is just grab a normal map. Now, I'm going to actually uh, create two versions of this curvature. And the reason is is because I want to have fine-tuned control over uh, the curvature for all of this kind of high-frequency noise versus the curvature for the edge of the rock. And notice here when we look at the curvature map for the edge of the rock, we really can start to see this rock shape. Uh, and this, this technique here where we're actually blending this curvature over top of our color, this, this goes a long way to help sell the effect of that we actually have you know this rock shape so you can see it almost gives us that nice kind of beveled edge here kind of this white kind of outline around especially here you can see where it really starts to come through uh, kind of in our chipped edge as well so um, what I want to do with this is go back so here again we're just going to select our link and we're going to trace our line back here and so this is going to be kind of like the height map that I'm going to use and so we had talked about how this was created in a previous video, and this is going to become our height map. So here we're just kind of tracing our, uh, our way back to our normal map. And so here I'm just using the normal node as part of the operational node. So I hit the space bar, and here uh, we have our normal. Just feed it a height map, and we can generate this normal map. Now, uh, here I just have the intensity set uh, at this value. And then I just take the normal map, and I create curvature using the curvature node which can be found here in the library. So if I just start to type in curve, uh, you'll see that we have this curvature node. And so now I'm using the curvature node uh, to get uh, you know, the curvature information for this. I also have kind of like these uh, real kind of empty zones here. So this is kind of like the, uh, you know, the rock itself. As you can see, it has kind of like a plateau. And then it slopes down. Uh, and as we kind of slope down, if you'll notice, what we're, what we're really aiming to do is notice how we've kind of got this dirt it's kind of collecting down here in, in, in the lower parts, and then it, it falls off as it comes up towards these higher slope plateaus. So the idea, and again, I'll just kind of move it around here so we can see this, and you can really see it kind of in this rock uh, formation here. Well, we have moss and dirt, and notice it's just sticking around all the edges here. So what we need, though, is we need to create some of this high-frequency noise, and you can see it here in this kind of white area. We need that here uh, in this flat area. So like I was talking about, we have kind of like this plateaued area here. And so to do that, I'm going to utilize a different normal map. So here I'm just going to move down, uh, just trace my line, and I'm going to grab this normal map. And so utilizing this normal map, and if we go ahead and feed this into the curvature, you can see that we get... Uh, kind of curve information uh, still a little bit here on the rock so it's still utilizing that same kind of uh, curve data from the rock but what we're doing with this one is we're isolating it more so that we can intensify it because if we just use this curvature and if we set the intensity at, uh, at this specific value so that it looks uh, very good uh, kind of curve information for a lot of this high frequency detail noise uh, we're gonna lose a lot of our edge work here on the rock shapes themselves and we don't want that so that's why uh, I've simply just kind of broken this down into two sections then I'm gonna blend these guys together using a max lighten node so by doing this uh, this becomes the the the, uh, the curvature information that I'm going to be using and notice here that we've got kind of all this kind of white uh, information for this edge edge wear uh, and then we've got kind of this gray background and we're going to utilize this in a couple different ways so here's one way we're going to utilize this let's just go ahead and look you can see that I'm using this as my curvature information now instead of just this map we're utilizing this map here 
And so we're feeding this into the curve information. Then we have our ambient occlusion. So I'm just utilizing an ambient occlusion node. Uh, here, let's select our link here, what was already selected right when I select the node itself. So let's just trace this guy down. And we can see here uh, that we're going to pull this ambient occlusion information here uh, from this height information. So we're pulling this guy up from the height and we're using the ambient occlusion node. Uh, here it can be found in the library as well. So ambient occlusion. It takes a height map as input, as, you, as denoted here by the input uh, label, and allows us just to uh, tweak a few settings here uh, to generate some ambient occlusion. So now we've got our curvature and our ambient occlusion. We're feeding it through the mass generator uh, to create this dirt. And then I can adjust the parameters to get the kind of dirt that I want. But the dirt's collecting uh, in the areas, uh, in the occluded areas and so on. So like I said before in the previous video, this is where uh, here, if we talk about our roughness, uh, we took our rough information and then we took uh, that, uh, that dirt, the, the, basically the mass that's being generated from that mass generator. And we're just utilizing that here with a max light and again, just to add it back to uh, what we were working with here for our roughness. So we had talked about that in the previous video and we can finally just kind of close out uh, that kind of missing gap there when we talk about uh, our dirt section. So um, this dirt's being used in a couple different ways. First, let's take a look at how this, the curvature we've generated. So this is the combined curvature. Let's take a look at how this is being used. So I have this section here that I call curvature. And what I'm doing is I'm taking this information and I'm going to make a mask out of it basically. Or yeah, yeah basically the idea is I'm making a mask. So I want this to be you know, more black and white. So I'm using histogram scan basically to uh, just block out the kind of the gray values. So you can see that we've, we've scanned um, the, 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 the histogram of those values so that we're only looking at really the kind of the bright areas. So by this, we've, you know, by, through this operation, we're basically selecting um, all of the curve data. Uh, then I just kind of run it through the levels just to kind of brighten it up just a little bit here. And then finally here, I'm just kind of blending this in. Now, what I'm doing with this uh, here, let's look at what we have before. So we have basically our curve information. If we look at it kind of in this dark area, this dark area is also representing some information here that's going to be utilized in our water mask. And so what I need to do is this curve information, some of the water, and again, that's what we're going to talk about last is that water mask. But the water here uh, is in this area, and it looks uh, you know, really weird to see you know, the, the, the curve data in this water. So we just want to mask it out, and that's what we're doing here. So if we take a look at the opacity, this becomes my water mask, and we're just blending it in here uh, in this opacity input just to remove the, water, the curve areas, uh, the curve data that we're working with here, the curvature, from the water. Now, um, you may not be familiar with the kind of setup that I have going on here to do this, so I just want to quickly explain this. Um, let's just take this, uh, this uniform color node. It's docked right now, so if I just select the node and hit D on the keyboard, um, I can actually expand this guy. And so what I'm doing here is um, I'm just taking uh, this, uh, you know, basically this map here, and I'm just using uh, the opacity of this mask uh, to basically knock out uh, some values. Uh, and I could do that with just having this uh, input here uh, in the background and then the opacity. I don't really need this in the foreground, so you can do that. But I just want to uh, bring to your attention that you should never really use a blend node in Substance Designer without both the foreground and background having something uh, driving it. So uh, you don't ever want to have a situation where we're going to have the background and the opacity here as a mask uh, and then nothing in the foreground because that's it, it, it's not very optimized for the way the Substance Engine is going to calculate this blend node. So what I've done here to kind of work around that is just added a uniform color uh, set to black using the same kind of optimization technique I discussed in the previous video where we set this to 16 by 16. It's going in the foreground so we don't need to worry about uh, how the input's set here uh, for this particular node. And so now I've got it selected and I'll hit D on the keyboard just to kind of dock it into place, kind of get it out of our way. And so finally here, uh, we're going to start to add the curvature information back on to uh, kind of the noise that we have from before. So if we come back here, we've got a blend node. Uh, notice here that we're using an add linear dodge and we're going to add uh, this map and this map and we're going to base it based on the, this opacity value that we're placing into here and we got this set to add so when we do that we're basically combining all three of those maps uh, uh, together through just one single blend node here so the foreground the background and the opacity which again is going to be our curvature information we use an add linear dodge blend mode to that 
and we're uh, just combining all three maps with this one node here. And so now you can see that uh, this is the kind of uh, you know base color here. So what did I call this over here? This was I called this like my base rock. And remember in the previous video we kind of left off that this is our base rock. Well now we've added this curvature information to it. So it might be better just to kind of slide this guy over to here. Um, probably I could have included you know if I wanted to get very uh, you know. Uh, if I wanted to get very organized with this, uh, I'm, I'm considering this curve information to be part of this, uh, so I probably should have put it into this block. But you know, you get the idea of what's going on. We're mixing this here in uh, together. Okay, so now that we have this in place, uh, we're kind of now let's step back through uh, you know our steps of what we were doing here. So we originally started this video talking about you know our moss and our dirt, and you know we included this to discuss our curvature and our dirt. Uh, so now let's go ahead and take what we have here from that base rock color and we're going to start to add the dirt into it. So now what I have is another blend node. I've got a multiply here. So I'm multiplying our dirt with this value here. And you can see that I'm using the blending mode of multiply. And I've just lowered the opacity again just to kind of feather this effect in so it's not so, uh, so dark around the edges. Now let's take a look at what this opacity is. So what I'm doing here is uh, I'm taking the dirt itself and I'm doing kind of basically the same technique that I did here with this curvature is I'm blending here our dirt uh, and I'm multiplying that over top of our base color and I'm masking it here again with this, uh, with this dirt uh, effect here or what has been produced through our mass generator. And so when we do this, uh, here's the result that we get. So we've got our stone, but now we have this dirt. And also, again, because that's driven by you know ambient occlusion and curvature, you can see where uh, it, it produces a really nice effect where this dirt is only showing up around kind of the, the cracked areas, uh, such as you see here. So uh, now that we have uh, this guy in place, uh, we're going to start to uh, combine uh, basically uh, the, the rock base color, the dirt, and our moss. So here we're just going to use another blend node. And so we've added uh, this into play. So here's where we're starting to get some of that kind of moss in different areas. Now, uh, what I have here is just a copy mode. So I'm just placing, uh, in this sense, uh, the moss uh, being the foreground over top of the background okay, to create this. And so here's where you can see where that started to show up here. So let's just kind of go back and forth. So here's the area where we don't see any of the moss. We double click uh, to view what's happening. And here's where we start to see some of this value showing up in here. Now, we're also utilizing an opacity, so let's take a look at what this is doing. So we're going to have this link is already selected. Let's just trace this guy back to see uh, that this is actually coming here from the pebbles and mosque mask. So um, in this case, uh, let's just talk about this mask here. Uh, so uh, like we had talked about in, in, you know, way back in one of the earlier videos, uh, this is where we started to uh, do some blends here for our cracks and our small shapes. Uh, and then here's where we add in kind of our surface detail to this. So um, from this blend here, um, I was able to do an invert grayscale. Okay, so if we take a look at what we have here, remember uh, kind of these white areas, this is going to be kind of the, um, the areas that are uh, kind of like our plateaus here, our raised areas, and then we're going to kind of slope off, uh, you know, slope downwards here into where these cracks are. Now I'm going to invert that. Okay, so now we've inverted that where the white areas are going to be uh, where uh, basically our low areas is, you know, we're just constantly using these masks because we're using them to kind of select areas of, you know, the material of where we want to work. And then what I've done is after I've inverted that, I just ran it through a levels to really kind of clamp out these values here. Okay, so in this case, the black areas are going to be the high areas and the white areas are going to be all the, the lower kind of sloped in areas of the rock. So everywhere around the cracks. Notice here you can see the crack lines themselves as white. So we're using that mask. We come all the way back up here. We're using that mask here to blend in where our moss is going. And that's how our moss uh, is, is showing up. And you can see it here in this part of the rock. It's just showing up around in this dark area. So uh, that's how we have, uh, we've got, you know, a couple things combined here. We've got our base rock color here. Uh, that uh, adds our curvature information. It's now adding dirt to it. So that's where we are at this stage. We have our moss. We're adding our moss in at this stage. 
that's being blended in with the uh, this mask here, which is just finding kind of like uh, you know the areas lower uh, in the rock areas to the cracks. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add uh, the water. So this is actually the water. What I'm talking about is 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 the water that's going to be um, you know how the water is going to affect the base color itself. So what I want to do for areas of a material that are wet is I'll take the base color value and I'll add a hue saturation to that. So if you have something like a material that has water, you're going to notice that uh, it becomes or it gives the effect of this of it being darker. So if there's you know if you have a stone and there's water on the stone, the stone is going to look darker in the water areas and it's going to be a bit more saturated. So that's what I'm doing here. So but using this node, I'm doing it to the entire uh, the entire texture. So we've got you know the version of our base color and then one that's just had its saturation increased and its lightness lowered so it's darker and more saturated that's going to be our water areas and now I'm gonna blend this guy over this guy so notice we're just using a copy mode and we're just no blend no opacity or anything like that we're gonna straight up blend this here with just a mask and so this mask is going to become our water mask so we have this guy selected let's trace this guy all the way back and you can see here's where we start in on the water mask so now that we're finally kind of pointing back to this water mask, let's talk about it. So uh, same as this general mask here, um, you can see that you know I've got my blend. Uh, we started uh, here. This is the blend of my cracks, my surface detail, and everything. And just as I discussed earlier with the uh, the pebbles and the moss mask, you know I just inverted it. So we start here with an inversion. Then we run a levels on it. Okay, so the idea is that you know I'm trying to uh, just find these areas, uh, such as you see here. These dark areas are starting to target here what my water is going to be. Now, this is mask here is being utilized uh, in this region. We'll talk about that in just a bit. So then, what I'm doing here is I'm inverting it again because now I want to just basically uh, be able to select these areas. Okay, and when I say select, I mean that like white is what is going to be like held out, and black is going to become transparent. So now you can see that my water areas are becoming these dark circle. These uh, excuse me. These water areas are becoming these white areas. And notice here with my crack lines, there's also water uh, basically collecting in these crack lines, uh, the way I have it at this point. So then I run a histogram scan on it. Uh, in this point here, I think uh, if I look at this, I don't actually need this histogram scan because I can see here it's not really doing much to this. Um, let's see. What I've got going on here yeah this node here I'm not really 100% sure what I was kind of thinking of this guy I think I was the idea was I was just using this to kind of um, actually yeah I think I just need to increase this position value a bit more so let's take a look at what I have here so the idea is I'm trying to um, create this water mask you can see that it works nice for me on some of these edges because we're you know uh, you know they're nice and crisp but then some of these areas it's just you know it's real it's real feathered and soft and blurry and it's you know it, there's a lot of holes and stuff like that and that could be okay for water the way it's kind of flowing over the rock uh, but I can use a histogram scan to this to kind of uh, clamp out some of the holes that are happening in here uh, and if I want I can actually even increase the contrast of that to kind of push that a little bit further uh, so let's go ahead and do that. That's what we should really be using that for. Uh, so again, what I'm doing here is it's just the way I'm using this histogram as a way of kind of refining uh, my mask here. And then this guy, this becomes my water now. So here you can see that this is just simply my water mask. And this guy is getting used in a lot of places that we have skipped. For one, let's talk about our height. So here's our water mask. Now. If you look at the material itself, you can see that you know we've got the rocks and the water is kind of uh, basically kind of protruding down like a puddle in the rock itself. So what I did to, to create that effect was I took the water mask and I just bring it down here into my height. So remember how we talked about you know several videos back, we talked about that in kind of normal to height. All right, and what I wanted to do was I took uh, I took here uh, the mask that I had. This is my water mask, and I invert it. Okay, so now what we're doing is, here it is before, notice the white areas are standing in for the water. In height information, okay, white is going to uh, basically, um, you, know, you know, move outwards or push outwards, I guess we could say protrude outwards, and then dark values are going to sink in or push downwards. And so if I use an invert grayscale, you can see that right now the water is, it would be kind of bumping outwards, and then when we invert that, 
we're now pushing it inwards, so black. And so here's our normal to height that we used, okay? And notice here some of that kind of water areas here that we have uh, that's just kind of coming in through some of the other mass. So what we're doing is we're taking this mask and we're going to just basically subtract these areas from the height map because we want them to be black. So we select this guy and we just multiply it. So here's what we get for our height map. So here's my height map. And now I've taken this mask and I've subtracted it from the height map. So now our height map has these dark you know, pits basically. This is like my water puddle. And so now you can see where the water is coming or how the water is now affecting uh, the height map. It's just basically removing that data from it. So it, it gives the effect that it sinks down into the rocks. And then we had talked about where we took this value and then uh, added our pebbles to it and so on. So what's really neat about this now is look, you've got this water here and then look at how some of the pebbles just show up right into the water areas here. And uh, same thing here, you know, some of the water areas, you can see the pebbles are showing up. And it gives a cool effect, like right in here where we have those water. And now we have like this little pebble kind of sticking up out of the water like this. Uh, that was something I, I really thought turned out well. Um, so one other thing uh, that I didn't mention uh, quite yet was when I talked about this guy, the pebbles and the mosque mass. So we talked about how we were using this here for our moss mask, but also uh, it's driving the pebbles too. So remember, uh, you know, way back in one of the earlier videos, we had our pebbles, uh, and we had to supply an input mask. Uh, and so basically, we're now just placing those pebbles in all the low areas. Because remember, uh, you can recall that when I was talking about this moss mask, uh, the way that these white areas are basically, you know, not the plateau or the top areas of the rocks, they're kind of the bottom areas, kind of where they're going to collect around where the, uh, where the um, water is. So that means that by utilizing this, this mask here for my uh, pebbles, we're going to place all the pebbles lower on the ground like this. So it's just, you know, kind of just a creative way to try to use these masks to help us, you know, select areas of the material to uh, either manipulate uh, or, you know, place scatter objects in those areas and so on. Okay, so at this point, we talked about, you know, here our water mask. Um, let's also talk about this water mask. We've covered it with, uh, let's see, we also, let's talk about how we can uh, work this here with our normal map as well, because I want to cover all the areas that the water mask uh, that I've had to skip. So remember here, uh, we took that uh, histogram and we subtracted it here from our height. Uh, here's where we were generating our normal map. Uh, so here I've got this normal blend. Uh, and so what I'm doing here with this normal blend, let's take a look at this guy. I've got a node here. Uh, let's just hit D to remove it. And uh, so what I've done is here's our here's our normal map, and there's a lot of uh, detail in this normal map. Well, areas where the water is located, I want to remove uh, the normal information. So this this technique I'm going to talk about right now is is basically the same thing that we just did with the height map. We want to remove the water from the normal. So to do that, I use the normal blend node, and that will allow us to blend between two normal maps based on a mask. So for the background, we have our normal map with all the detail. And for the foreground, I'm just using this normal color here. And you can get to this here in our library. So if I just start to type in normal, uh, we have a node here that allows you to work with just different normal color. And so you can actually, it's pretty handy, you can use it to uh, select any normal color. Here it's just the default normal value, which just means, you know, no bump at all. And so we're blending that. Here I've noticed that this is at 2048 as well. So what we could do with this guy is, you know, same technique from before. Let's take this guy and set it to absolute and drop this guy down to uh, 16 by 16. Okay, so here we are, four and four, and here's where we get the value. Now, if we take a look at uh, our map, again, we're optimized again because we got this normal color that's only 16 by 16 pixels uh, because it's just, you know, it's a constant value. And let's select this and kind of uh, dock this back into the normal blend. And everything else we've already explained with that. Uh, also here with our roughness, uh, so remember before we talked about the water mask. Uh, so here, uh, if we look at this guy, let's take a look at the node. Uh, it's tracing all the way back here from our water mask. So here's what we have in this case. Now for this guy, um, I took this histo the, the histogram scan here from the water mask and uh, let's just bring it over here to a levels. So I ran a levels on here, uh, basically just to kind of select these areas and then I've, I'm blurring them a bit uh, and then just using that as the opacity mask here. So you can see where kind of the water is showing up into this area. 
And that covers uh, basically our mask here for our moss and our pebbles and our mask for our water mask. And so uh, finally, uh, you know, let's get back to where uh, we were before we kind of went off on that uh, went off on that kind of side quest there to uh, talk about the water mask. So here we'll just zoom all the way back up and here is where we had that water mask. So like I said before, uh, we've got our base color value. Uh, we used a hue saturation here to basically saturate and then darken uh, the value here for that base color. And we're blending these two guys uh, based on the water mask here. So here's where we get that value. And now we're gonna pass that guy here into uh, another blend node. So this blend node here, uh, what we're doing is, uh, this is where we're blending the, kind of our moss value again back over top of this guy. And this time we're using uh, another type of mask. And so uh, the idea with this mask um, is that I want to be able to put some moss and I wanted to concentrate it more on these edges. So um, this is something that I use often as well in projects. So uh, this, what you see here is like kind of like an edge mat or uh, you might see it as, uh, you know, used as a light wrap or something like that. But uh, this is basically an edge mat. And so um, if we look at this guy, uh, you can see that, you know, it's very dark line. This is where the water is. Okay, so all this is the water. And then this area right here is the rock. So the white uh, you can see that we've got white right on the edge and then it kind of falls off. So right at the edge of the water is where the most intense moss is going to be. And then it's going to gradually fall off as we start to move up the slope of the rock towards the plateaus of the rock. And that's how I'm, I'm, I'm pushing this moss down into this area. If we kind of zoom in really close, uh, here we can see what's going on. So uh, here it is uh, before and then here it is after. And here's where we're putting that moss in right around in those edges. And uh, that is going to be another mask uh, that we should talk about here. Um, actually, I'm sorry, I was looking at the wrong one here. Uh, we were viewing this mask. So here it is uh, from uh, before. Let's zoom in on this guy. And here it is with af after. So you can see that you know what I want to do is just add that moss back over top again. So if we do this, you can see that we've just kind of darkened that moss in over top of this uh, again here. And so, like I said, we need to talk about this mask here. And so let's do that now. Let's just zoom on down. And here's where I start to create all of my edge mats. So the trick to creating these edge mats is you're just going to blur the mat and then just simply subtract it from itself. So to get this rock edge, I'm taking uh, basically this water mask here. And then in this case, I'm using a high quality blur. So here I'm blurring it. Uh, and here on the blend node, you can see that I'm going to do a subtract uh, mode. And so here's where I'm taking the blur. Uh, here's the original, so the non-blur. And then the result of subtracting that by itself, like we were doing here, is that you'll get this, this nice edge mat. And we can control uh, the edge mat through the blur. So if I come over to the blur and I start to increase the intensity, uh, here you can see that it starts to expand that blur out a little bit more. So in this case, let's just uh, expand this a bit more like this. So here's what we're getting for that blur. And uh, like I said, if we take a look at this guy, I'll just select uh, the node here and we'll just travel back up uh, to the path. Uh, this is where we're adding that moss uh, around the edge of the rock again. So uh, we're just kind of uh, intensifying it by just blending it back over top again based on this mask. Whoops, I'm sorry, uh, wrong guy based on this mask here. So we've got this guy in place. Now, uh, this other node that I just keep uh, wanting to go to, uh, what we're doing for this guy is uh, we're taking the water. So uh, let me just find an example of how this is working here in, uh, in the actual 3D view. Okay, so if we look at this, what I wanted to do was instead of having the water have this uniform value, I wanted to have it to where the moss, not only was the moss collecting on the edge of the rock like this, it was also collecting on the edge of the puddles. And then it would just kind of fall off towards the middle. So maybe it'd be like, you know, less green here in the middle. And so here you can see where we kind of have this effect of this moss right here around the edges. And so uh, again, you can see that it's just a matter of taking this noise here. Uh, this time, I actually used a, a lighter version. So here's this dark version here. Uh, I just uh, ran it through a, a levels here just to quickly brighten it a little bit more. And then um, we're just blending that. So we're blending this uh, over top of the original. Uh, however, we're doing it based on this new mask. 
And so now you can see this mask uh, has all of the water areas. So here's a good one to look at. So here's the, the, the edge that you see here. This, this black is the rock. And this uh, haloed kind of uh, edge that we have, this is the water. So now you can see it's like reverse. So on the edge of the water is where we intensify that moss. And then as it starts to fade off to black, like this is kind of like the middle of the puddle, uh, we don't get any of the moss there. So here, let's just uh, go back to where our edge mats are, and let's take a look. Uh, we're basically doing the exact same thing. So the bottom one that we just covered was the rock edge, and now we're doing the water edge, and we're just going to invert it, really. Uh, so uh, here is my water mask, and uh, again, we're just going to use a blur. So this time, just a little bit different setting here on the blur. Now, notice that I'm taking the blur version and putting that into the background, and in the foreground, we're putting the non-blurred version, whereas before, the foreground we had the blurred version and the background we had the non-blurred so we just kind of reversed it still using a subtract and now we get this type of edge effect so here it is uh, before it's just reversed and here it is after uh, it's just like I said it's just reversed and so now we can just see uh, you know where we have this edge mat for the puddle itself and so we're also utilizing that way here uh, way down here on the occlusion uh, so here on this water, you can see we've got this nice edge mat, and I'm using that for uh, a mask for the occlusion. So let's come down and take a look at the occlusion. So here, uh, this is one we haven't talked about yet. Uh, the occlusion uh, I'm generating using our ambient occlusion node, and the input to that is just going to be our height. And so here's our height map uh, that we created from our normal to height. And uh, we're feeding this guy in, and we're creating this occlusion. And so now, here in this section for this AO, I have a blend. And so let's take a look at this guy. Uh, here we've got this uniform color again. Uh, here you can see that I've already optimized this with uh, the 16 by 16 pixel. Uh, so we'll select this guy. And you can see that all I was doing was that, that, that same kind of technique before where I had the ambient occlusion here in the background. And I'm just blending it uh, with this opacity. And so, uh, and so the foreground and background, this, this foreground being this small like dark area, is going to be blended here. And so when we do that, you can see that uh, we're added this occlusion. So look at how this mass, this kind of edge mat here, is affecting our occlusion. So on the water, I basically have it near the edges like this. I have just wanted it a bit darker with the ambient occlusion and a little bit kind of, uh, you, know, uh, you know, not as dark here. Uh, towards the uh, towards the middle of the uh, of the puddles and things like that. So that's what I'm using for that. So here's another area of the puddle where you can see around the edges of the rock and everything. It's a bit darker here. And so um, then we just kind of output this guy here to uh, the actual ambient occlusion. Okay, so we're very close to uh, coming to the end of this material. Uh, so next up, let's just kind of go back up to where we were with our base color. Now, what we had just covered, uh, you know, as we went through our ambient occlusion, uh, and we were talking about placing, uh, you know, kind of this moss uh, here around the edge of the rock, and then we were also talking about the, the way we were adding, uh, you know, this kind of moss towards the uh, inside edge of where the, uh, the puddles are going to be. Uh, so now we're going to add uh, some more moss weathering to the scene. And so uh, to do this, I actually just utilize our moss weathering node that you can find here in the library. And so what that does is it just takes base color here into uh, the uh, base color into consideration here. Uh, it also needs uh, either position or height uh, for the way this moss is kind of working. Um, I could hook my height map into it, but it, it doesn't really make an effect uh, so much. Uh, especially since, well, because of the way I'm going to be uh, using this mask in the next node. Uh, so all I was doing in the case of this node was just getting the values from it. So um, it was just a way for me to get kind of a nice uh, moss effect here with just a single node. So I didn't actually feed in any mesh data into this guy in this case. Uh, so uh, what we're going to do is uh, just take the moss weathering and... Uh, we're going to just kind of feed this here into a final blend. So what we're going to do is, you know, again, moss weathering, we need to blend it back over top of um, uh, our base background. So here's our background, and now we're going to add the moss over top. And so when we do that, this is the effect that we get, and we're going to utilize this, this mask here to do that. So this is my moss uh, mask, and it's the last mask that we need to cover. And so here it is uh, in this area, moss mat. So let's take a look at what I did for this guy. 
So first thing is I had the water mask, uh, and then here I had an invert of that, um, and uh, just the way I was kind of just free-forming this guy when I created it, uh, I ended up, you can see I kind of got myself in a loop where I had basically uh, the levels here, and then I had to invert it uh, for one thing, and now I'm inverting it back, uh, so I don't really need to do this. Uh, so we can optimize this here, removing a node. Uh, so let's just take this node out. Uh, let's grab just the uh, water mask here and just plug this guy in and plug this guy in. And so this node here is not really being used anymore. And so uh, here, uh, what I'm doing again is just kind of making my edge mat. So I'm blurring this guy. And uh, what I'm doing here is I'm just kind of placing it back uh, inside of itself. So here's the blurred version, here's the non blurred version. And now here is uh, the subtract mode. So what I'm again, what I'm trying to do is I want to place this moss on the edges of all the rocks again. So uh, I'm I'm really just kind of retracing my steps uh, once again. So uh, the black areas, uh, these are going to be the water spots, and then or the kind of the puddles, and then we're just kind of pushing uh, this edge around all the rocks. So that's what we're doing here with this. Then I just kind of run a levels on it once again. So now you can see that you know here's what I had before uh, with this edge mat, and I ran a levels on it just to really push it further. So here at the very peak of some of these rocks, there's not a lot of moss, but that's kind of what I was doing here for that. Now uh, the next phase of this, uh, and you can look at it here, is I wanted to go in and just kind of break this up because you know this mass that I'm trying to build up, this is very you know very smooth, uh, you know there's not a lot of uh, you know organic noise to this. So what I did was I grabbed you know the black and white spots, ran a levels on it, and then again here same technique where I'm just using the opacity here to kind of mask that out. And when I do that, again the rule of don't leave one of the foreground or background uh, empty when you use a blend, so that's what I'm doing here. Uh, I suspect, uh, yes I do, with this node I forgot to uh, switch this to absolute. And so here we're going to switch this guy uh, here. Why don't we just type the numbers in. So 4 and 4. So 16 by 16. Now, here is a, a, a good example where we get into this issue where the, the map looks too small. Uh, so we need to go to our blend. Instead of this being input here, because we put this into the background, uh, we need to set this to absolute. Uh, oops, I'm sorry, not absolute, uh, relative to parent. And so that'll set us back to where we need to go. Now, the reason why I kind of have this configuration, like before you kind of saw me do this kind of the reverse, the reason why we have it this configuration is because in the case of this setup, I'm using this blend node to basically create like, um, you know, basically just hold out something with a mask. So in order to do that, you would have you would place you know something in the foreground, and then uh, leave the background empty basically, and then pr place in like a mask here into the opacity to kind of get this effect. But like I said, we can't really do that because of optimization reasons. So that's why uh, I'm using the uniform color here in the background at this point. So uh, here is where we have uh, this effect. Um, another way that um, I probably could have done this would just have been to use one of the RGB nodes. So uh, here's another way you could work on that. If you go to the RGB nodes, um, RGBA merge. So if you ever have like a value uh, where uh, you want to basically take uh, an image or an input like this, and you just want to you know mass you know give it an alpha. Instead of kind of trying to hook it up through this blend node, you could do it this way here too. But this is here is taking RGB when you do this, so this is why I did it this way. But you know, if you plug this in, it's going to try to do a grayscale conversion for me. It's just adding an extra node that I don't need. It just you know depends on how you work. But the setup that I have here, uh, I just want to make sure this is clear. The setup that I have here is the RGB, so RGB and an alpha. This is the same setup. So with the blend, put something in your foreground. Uh, you have uh, put the, uh, the uniform color here uh, in the background and then put the opacity. Although in this case, uh, yeah, you can see that there, is that there is alpha information here to this as well. So here I'm viewing the alpha. So let's pull this guy out here. And that's what we're generating with that. And then so finally, uh, here we're just going to use Max Lighten. So we have uh, this. And then what I did was I just uh, grabbed uh, the uh, moisture noise again, ran a levels on it. Uh, and then I'm just blending it or adding it to the mass that I have below here using a max lighten mode and then here's what we get for our moss. 
So here you can see I'm collecting moss in different areas and just you know really getting, trying to get kind of chaotic with this with this uh, variation here. And so yeah, here's our node. We got it selected already. We'll just trace our line home. And here's where we get uh, the moss. You can see it's really collecting here in this area where it was really white. So here you can see where it's collecting mainly. Uh, and then finally, uh, we're going to output that here to our base color. So that's going to conclude our series on creating this procedural rocky ground material. Some of the core concepts that we discussed were the importance of variation, as well as uh, you know taking a material such as this and trying to tackle it you know in, in smaller chunks and sections instead of trying to think about the thing you know uh, on a whole. Uh, we're able to you know kind of use this step by step process to get us where we need to go uh, in a, in an organized and uh, in an easier way. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you found this helpful, and I'll see you next time.